Shall we send the new calendar? <laughs> Kim Jong Fun. <laughs> he's on. He's on like a jet ski. You see me? And on a beach. <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> They're all stupid. Young girls are stupid. I've said it now. I'm moving but on. But you can't. Thank you, oh, ladies and gentlemen. God's We're going to go. Because it's going to be like this all fucking show. What? Will you just yeah, shut up? Excuse me. If all right, okay. Well, how's, you didn't how's this for a fucking TV? I was agreeing with right. you. How's this for a TV show then? Hello and welcome to him and her. <laughs> well, that would be shit too, wouldn't it? Well, it would but be shit. You too. didn't. Look, I was agreeing with you and saying, but you can't rewrite history. Right? The dog was called what the dog was called. We can't rewrite Who that. Who writes it... history? Whoever won the war. Exactly. The tr you know the first casualty of war? And the this truth, was the... Jim, the, the truth. Oh, for fuck. <laughs> Don't you condescend me, you. So has someone been knocking on 10 Downing Street and saying, Rishi, you've got to get out and smell the coffee because people are getting fucking sick of this now. Uh, did you and he see? did a speech the other night, didn't he? How was that speech? Um... He just called it. He said, I want to be on television now, didn't well, he? Well, I'd suggest it's at least five months too late for yeah. a start. Um, I mean, we've got footage... What did he say? Well, he, he, was, he said this is a sort of... It came on the back of the Galloway uh, victory in the by-election. We'll talk about that in a sec. Well, he got really upset because of cough medicine. <sighs> arf, arf, arf. Arf, arf, arf. Good. So, he, he, in his speech, and he, he was saying, you know, our democracy is being undermined, right? Mm. And we are facing this threat of Islam, Islamism and extremism. Um, and so I think people went, ooh, he's finally sort of acknowledging the elephant in the room. We're finally getting there. However, then bottled it uh, and said, of course, you know, we're also under threat from the far right. Oh, well, well, I, I would never argue, get that. It's just bottling it and having to qualify it because you're too scared to say this. Now, we have 43,000 people on our terror watch list, right? 90% mm -hmm. mm. of those are Islamic extremists, right? Now right. That, that would then suggest to you, we know what the main threat is, right? So why, why is our well, Prime Minister well, bottling it? Here's a question for you. Mm. If 43%, 90% 90 of them are Islamic extremists, why are we watching them if we already know they are? Well, well that's a waste of resources. You've got to watch the ones that we don't know are. Uh, no, you Islamic watch the ones. Well, I mean, we don't know. We don't know what's who who is in our country at the moment, do we? And this is the thing: mass migration well, has well, failed to tackle them. This, this, this what leads to the problem for us saying we want to watch all Muslims to see if they're going to become radicalised. They're that sort of racist and, and fuels tension. Well, of course. And, and George Galloway getting in and people say it's undermining democracy. Well, it is democracy because he was voted in fair and square. Oh, we're gonna, we disagree on this. Well, he was. That's well, okay. a fact. Okay. This, uh, Are I, you saying it, it was uh, illegal? It was a bit Trumpy? No, no. A bit Trumpy? Trumpy. No. no, not Trumpy, Trumpy, but what, Trumpy. What I would say is... It was a fair result. I was voted in. I would suggest it's quite scary that... You're quite right. We have an MP now, a sitting MP, democratically elected mm -hmm. MP, so I'm not yeah. suggesting yeah. that wasn't democracy, who has got in on the back of an anti-Israel, pro-Gaza stance, right? Yep. Now, we've had an MP that's been voted in purely on the back of events in the Middle East, right? Fuck all to do with Rochdale. I don't think he even mentioned Rochdale. No one well, seems most to... of the Middle East lives in Rochdale. Well, <laughs> well, this is this is what I, I, I find quite scary because you're looking at a, a demographic there that. Uh, <sighs> so probably George has only been to Rochdale twice in his life. I don't know. Now I have to uh, I have to tell you I know George. Mm. I've been on his program. I admire George. But He's sharp as a tag. Um, oh yeah. What about that great speech he did in America in front of Congress when he put his hand up and said, and he really took these yanks down a peg or two. It was a brilliant performance by him, and he is the ultimate. Uh, what can I say? He is the ultimate politician. He never got in because his chance wasn't there. And he's won a few by-elections and he appeared has. on Big Brother as a cat. What the but hell was that? If you look that? at Nigel Farage, who's probably the other side of the spectrum of I, him, I don't he's think, never got in. But I don't think Nigel Farage is anywhere as... You, people would argue, George Galloway, extreme left, Farage, extreme right. I don't think Farage is actually extreme right. I, I think he think speaks he for 
a, a vast majority of the country, George Galloway is extreme left. He is anti-Israel. Well, he wants to be. Um, no, well, but, but I knew I George he's... ages ago when I bumped into him outside somewhere. I think he was in Glasgow. And he had a picture of a Palestinian child that mm. had been injured. This is years and years yeah, and years yeah, yeah, ago yeah. and some other previous grief. And I said, you want to watch your ass, George? You're going to get yourself in trouble. And George said to me, Jim, this won't get me in trouble. This will get me this voted in. This will get in. me voted in. It, it is. Yeah, he every even, time he does said... something, he puts another 10,000 on him. And he understands that. But if that's... But is that not... You know, he, he said... But when who he else won... is going to represent them people in Rochdale? Well, I, this is, this is, this is, this is a massive Muslims. headache for Labour, though, because... Mm. They, they were banking on the Muslim vote. Now, obviously, they had to get rid of their candidate because of anti-Semitism, right? So, so George Galloway swept in, got, I think, 30, almost 40% of the vote. A lot bad, of postal votes this time. Leave that there. Um, but, <laughs> you know, he said this is a victory for Gaza. Well, when are we going to have MPs representing what's right for our country and what's right for Britain? Because it seems to me that the, the, the people in Rochdale that went out to vote you know, the, well, we, we it's not really someone. the British interest that is that is at the forefront. And I think that's really quite scary. Well, the only one with British interests, really, right, who stuck his head above the parapet, was Lee Anderson. Have you seen the Christian Horner, oh, yeah. Jerry Halliwell saga? Well, Hornergate. First of all, I met Jerry Halliwell and oh. fell out with her. Oh. He was at the Palladium doing the tech run. Uh -huh. And she went, oh, Jim Davidson, why are you so sexist? I thought she was mm. going to say sexy. And, I, and she said with that little skirt up her ass, showing her little flat fucking ginger ass hanging. That I wonder why she called you sexist. She called me sexist. With and a flat ass. Imagine and her... that. <laughs> yeah. Well, what? What's sexist about that? She had a flat ass. Oh, right. If she laid face down, you could have parked your bike in it. <laughs> but anyway, he's so, flirted with someone at work. Yeah, so I think it's his PA. But he's not giver the news, has he? Oh, no, Jim, he's not giver the news. Well, that's what PAs are for. Oh, oh, Jim Davidson. What? Especially that's why I used to get temp ones. You get a new one every week. Fucking <laughs> So you're paying them overtime. Oh, God. So yeah. he sent these messages, and they're, they're obviously very <laughs> flirty, and they've all been released. They've all Have come they? out now. Yeah, so, so they've what, all been... officially like, released? Well, no, I think they've People are not allowed to print them. It doesn't well, say anything he's been, here. He's been saying things like, you know, he was video call, trying to video call her, and she's like, oh, why don't you go and call your wife instead? And he said things like, ooh, this makes... He said things like, um, ooh, do you remember when you got me out of control on the plane, and she's written back going, ooh, did you finish yourself off in the bathroom? Oh. So, so obviously, it's really embarrassing for, for Jerry Halliwell, right? But she's flown out. I believe she's in Bahrain, are they? She's flown out. Well, the Bahrain out. Grand Prix is going on at the moment. But, she's turned up and she's kissed him. And she's, pictures, she's wearing no makeup to make her look like the, the victim. victim. But ah, well, you'd, we feel like, you'd feel like shit. But she, um, oh, God, you know when you talk about Frosty? Ooh, oh. the, 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 the body language. So he's trying to touch her and Why put his hand around her and she's looking at him Hang like, on, you me this. fucking touch Why me. Why don't she dump him then? Well, because the fucking typical female wife money grabbing fucker because she'll have to move out. Of the, listen, they live in a 41 million pound house. He earns 8 million a year. Cut that in half. It still won't be enough for her. And it won't get her in the paper. She's in the paper because of him, not some washed up ginger little yeah, flat ass fucking person who but, calls me a sexist fucking. Oh, I've had enough. What's it saying? Show of unity as red eyed show Jerry. Of unity. Oh, unity. As red eyed Jerry stands by her husband. Of course, look at him, he's holding on to her like a fucking man like falling a off a cliff. It was the. But she was desperately trying to get his hand away from her. It's like, ooh, he ain't going to If she's that desperate, why don't she pack a bag and fuck off? I agree with you. I couldn't, I couldn't stay with anybody that did that. Could you? Could, if, if, you found, if, if you found those text messages from your partner, yeah. could you, in all honesty, stay with them? Because depends. I, well, I would, couldn't. Because I could you never let, let me answer or what? Oh, if you was my partner, I'd fuck straight off. <laughs> Wouldn't need any text. All I'm saying is, and don't forget, I'm all loved up. I know. So I'm not going to make this personal, but it all depends how much you love the person. It all depends. So like, by ditching this person because she's being awful to me is the best thing to do, right? But then, then what? But could you ever? Could in in all consciousness, could you ever? genuinely forget that and move on. The, th the thing is with me, it wouldn't matter how much I loved someone. So I'm loved up too. Um, I absolutely adore him. And it would break my heart and I'd want nothing more than the relationship to work. But I know 
deep down, I would never let that drop. So any time there was ever a crossword, I'd go, oh, you're going to text your missus. Yeah. It, would, it would be constant, and that would not be fair on anybody involved. Because it's just, it would n I don't think you can ever get back. I think all relationships, all relationships have something like this. There's always something. There's always, you don't love me enough, I don't love you. Mm. Why did you do this? Why don't you do that? I think you've just got to take a grown up pill and realise that the road to success is littered with failure and fuck ups, and we all make mistakes. That's a breach of trust, though, isn't it? And surely the foundation of every relationship is trust. If you ain't got that, you've got nothing. We're all fucked then. Um, so, a story in the Daily Mail. An Indonesian man had shoved a toothbrush, toothbrush, I'm from the black country. Tooth. Toothbrush, a toothbrush up his knob, right, for sexual satisfaction. A toothbrush. Electric one. I don't think it was electric. Ah, that would, what that a would pussy. smart. <laughs> if you try and get an electric one in there, it's much better. Can you imagine? A bit of margarine round the Jap's eye, in it goes. No. <laughs> But if, 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 <laughs> your nuts bang together like them things from the 60s, like that. Your fucking nuts give you a round of applause. But he'd, he'd, he'd had sex with it, still inside, Imagine though if he... and it snapped. No. Not, it's, not, it's, it's snapped inside, so he had to go to hospital, so there's like this x-ray, and this snapped. I mean, can you imagine? I wouldn't go to the doctors. I Would you go. just leave it no, there? I'd just, just die? I'd fucking drive the beach your head. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd have to. You, you could never... You could never Loads of people have done things like that. I saw a dirty film once of, oh. of a woman. With, she was lying there. She had a bit of a growl, I have to be oh. honest. And, and she's, got, she's got the head at the hoover. You know, not without the thing, but that round bit of the hoover. Yeah. And she's putting that on the Jack and Danny. Every now and then, it, it sucks a lip up. <laughs> it sort of... I fucking pissed myself laughing. <laughs> like, and then... It, oh. Oh, no, that's hideous noise. They are funny, aren't they? Funny, that's funny, funny. They funny, are funny, funny. funny. Um, Do you know what I'm saying just... now on stage? Go on. I'm talking about women's Jack and Danny's. Oh. I said, in the 70s, it was a big, hairy bush. <laughs> right, in the 80s, landing strip. In, in the 2000s, bald. Now, cock. <laughs> it's true, though, isn't it? <laughs> it, it shouldn't be funny, because it's true.